Welcome back. We are on the third day. Uh, <coughs> wow. Do you feel different today? Yes. You felt different today. Why? See, I told you. Before the service start, I heard the piano. <laughs> the pianist was playing. Everything feels different. The seamless working of the Holy Spirit fills our spirit, right? Amen. And then I was up there, you know, uh, jowling my hair, you know, and then I heard, hey, this fella never heard before his voice. <laughs> oh, so he's leading the hymn for the first time. First time, is it? Oh, quite a few times. So I was singing to get up there. You heard me? He lives, he lives. <laughs> great, great. Yeah, okay. Uh, Joel, huh? practice more often. <laughs> you got to stand up here more often. Okay, where are we today? Uh, we are on our last day of our seminar. Uh, <coughs> These two days, you know, I've took great pains to emphasize to you about the importance of worship and the church-centered living. Took great pains. Even the pain on my leg now <laughs> comes, from, comes because of that. So now, many of you around us, the conclusion of this message. Why did God emphasize the worship? Why did God emphasize the church-centered? What is the significance of all this? The significance is to empower you Okay, to empower you to conquer your seven fields. Understand? This is the message today. Your seven fields. Okay, you don't want to live a failing Christian life, right? You want to come to God, just praise God here, and then you fail outside. You're always in conflict with our family members. You're always groaning, complaining about life, how unfortunate you are, how life turns against you. You know, you don't want to be like that. You see, God is not like that. We worship a living God, Almighty God. He dwells in all our problems, you see. So we want to, don't want to live a failing Christian life. But everyone, you see, God wants us to be prosperous and successful. Everyone wants to be prosperous, successful, victorious. We want to triumph over our problems. But listen up. There's no way to be prosperous and successful without the church, without worship. Okay? Because everything in the physical realm is controlled by the spiritual realm. How you feel in the spirit how you see God in your spirit is how God works right here in the physical realm. You see? So, listen, this is what you need to be empowered with. You don't just worship here. You worship with your spirit here, you follow God in your spirit when you go out. You see? So, there are seven fields God has given to us. And the field, what is the most important field? Come again, the church. The tabernacle. It's like Israel. When they are in the wilderness, wilderness you have nothing, no water, no anything, you know, only the yellow sand, you know, fill the whole place. When you don't know where to go, during then they don't have compass, how did God lead them? How did God lead them? Through the tabernacle. They have to go by the guidance of the tabernacle. All the instructions of God come through the tabernacle. Am I right? So Moses go in the tabernacle, meet God there, receive instruction, tell the whole Israelite, so we go, so we stop, so we go in circles now. God has a reason. Anyone make noise, you're not happy about it, they get in trouble, you see? So the tabernacle gave the voice of God, you see? You can be smart, you can be capable, you see? You can do things well now. But you see, when you lose sight of the tabernacle, you lose sight, you get lost in the wilderness. This world is like a wilderness, you see? At one moment, you can, you can see water, you can see food. Next moment, you get nothing. You can have success now, next moment you lose it. You see? So, you always remember, you have an enemy in this world. And God gave the tabernacle to protect you, the church to protect you. Okay? So, you make sure you know why are you here. You see, you want, you want to know. So, those people who are truly progressing in church life, you will definitely see evidences in your fields. No doubt about it. Okay? No doubt. The church is never to draw your resources. The church is to empower your resources. Even when you spend time in the, in the church, God will multiply your efficiency. Amen? What efficiency? You're studying now, exams now. The e efficiency. Okay. When you tie to the church, then you're not wasting money. You tie to the church, God drives away the spirit of poverty. You see, Things don't go well. The finances doesn't come. There is a spirit of poverty there. You feel lacking already. Sometimes, you know, the money is coming. 
the jobs is coming, the businesses is coming, but they stop. Why? Because they are forces of darkness. Until you hear the voice of God, you submit to Him in your spirit, then the spirit goes, the angels work, the force of darkness go, then you restore your finances. You see, things go like that. Abraham Chitong is having a huge debt. You know, all of you only know he's a doctor, you know, you don't know what happened to him. He has a huge debt, you know, to pay off his debts. You know, he, he got a scholarship to start, uh, for medicine, but later on, you know, he didn't get the, that grade that he, he was supposed to, and then they took away the scholarship. He got to pay back everything, you see. He got a huge debt. It's way beyond him. When he came to my church, you know, he was like, you know, having nothing at all. Now, all the doctors were like driving cars, fast cars, you know. He was like having nothing. Yeah. And way beyond him, I, so I confirmed with him the word of God, his identity, then he restored the church life. We never thought, he never thought that this could get anywhere. He's because of, of the debt so huge, you see. But eventually, what happened was God provided enough and also a little abundance for him, <laughs> you see. So now he's right here, happy about life, happy about having no cows, but he have you guys, he have the gospel, amen. amen. <laughs> you see, this is the thing. I always tell him, you know, God, just, God can just give you the money overnight. But the thing is, what before that? What before? I always want to ask you guys. Everyone want quick success, fast results. What about the step? What about the process? Without the step, without the process, you will never reveal God. You will never reveal. How would you glorify God? You see, you don't know the process. You get a product. Oh, hallelujah. I just believe God. Tomorrow I see the money coming. I see the success coming. No, you never reveal God. You will never know how to hear the will of God meticulously. You see, God is leading you step by step. Mm. His loving guidance, you see. Even the enemy chases after David. David say, Lord, you are my shepherd. I'm not in one. Even right now, I see this is green pasture. The enemy come, you anoint me. You lay a table, a feast before me, in front of my enemy. He was eating well. Saul was chasing him, frustrated with anger. He was like eating duck or chicken, you know, in the cave. <laughs> this is a feast. I can eat. I have the appetite to eat. I don't fret for my life, you see? See, that's the thing. He saw that God is with him. I want, I want you guys to, to receive this, you see? Uh, so, <clears throat> it's, you guys want, listen up. It's never time consuming. It's never resources consuming to commit yourself to the church. And I want you to, guys to be assured that if you commit yourself to the church meetings, really spiritually, you commit, you know where is the value. You will never remain the same one or two years later. One, two years later, you will see evidence. In fact, six months down the road, six months, Adira, right? <laughs> Six months down the road, you will get evidence. There will be a turning point. The turning point is the part, you know, where you start to see evidence. Before that, God is working, but you cannot hear Him. You don't know what He's doing, you see? But you're struggling, you're struggling, you know? You hold on to the pulpit, you keep following, following, you know? But you see, when the turning point comes, it's just like Daniel. He prayed, prayed 21 days. The force of darkness was obstructing, you see, the angel Gabriel. After 21 days, the turning point comes, he heard the voice of the Lord. So don't give up. Don't give up. You see, miracles happen when you are following. Miracles don't happen during the turning point. In fact, when you see nothing, something is happening up there. Amen? Amen. Amen. You, you must have the spiritual insight. This is what I'm going to train you in. Because the men of faith in the Bible, they follow God through what? Faith. Faith. They are assured of the things that are unseen. When they follow God right now, they have an assured heart. They know God is pleased with them. That's enough. I don't have to see the product. It will come. You see? So, today, the church life, effective worship living, empower your seven fields. So, I want you to know that there are seven fields that God has prepared for believers. Seven fields. And it is God's will to prosper these seven fields of ours. Seven fields. It is God's will for us to receive evidence in these seven fields and glorify God in them, each and every one of them. So uh, before I go on, can we turn to a verse, Acts chapter, 11, uh, Acts chapter 1. This is a familiar verse. You see, before Jesus ascended, He has this most important charge 
for his beloved disciples. Okay? It's a... Uh, God take great pains. Jesus took great pains to explain to them, uh, teach them. Chapter 1, before he ascended. Acts chapter 1. God wants them to be empowered, you see. So here is it. Uh, you, you are familiar with the verse. I've been reading this so often. Okay. So Acts, listen up. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. So Jesus has done everything. He has incarnated, he has died, resurrected, resolved the condemnation, released the blessings, and now he reigned on the throne. But see, Jesus has accomplished everything. You must know, when you have nothing now, don't look at it as if you're nothing. Lord, you have accomplished it. Even though I have nothing, I have everything because I'm a child of God. I have heaven, I have everything. You see? So that nothing can become something straight away. You, you, you don't fret for that, you see? Because the word of God is, when God created the whole universe, the whole universe was hollow, nothing at all. The Spirit of God was hovering above, above the waters and God said, let there be light. You see? Let there be light. And then the whole thing, nothing became something. You don't have a job now. You don't have anything now. God said, and you believe it, and then you don't know why. Things can just change the next day. Amen. You see, that is the thing. You must know. We are living in the spiritual realm. You see, God is working in the spiritual realm. But you really revert God's word, take God's word seriously. This is what you experience for your whole life. Chapter 3, uh, verse 3. After his suffering... He showed himself to this man and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. So he resurrected. Yes, he accomplished the salvation. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. About the kingdom of God. Now, you see, it is God's will, you see, to prosper your seven fields. So he took great pains, 40 days to explain about the kingdom of God. So many people don't understand what is this kingdom of God all about? What is this kingdom of God? Believe in Jesus. Your sins forgiven. You go to heaven. You have eternal life. You need four seconds. You don't need 40 days. <laughs> you know what I mean? So why 40 days? Imagine. So people don't understand. What's kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is just not getting, getting eternal life. It's about having a victorious life. You get a kingdom of God in your family. Your family will have happiness. You know how to let the kingdom of God descend upon your daily lives, upon your career, upon your relationship with your loved ones. You will prosper. You will be successful. See, so these are things that God needs to teach you bit by bit, repeatedly. I cannot just teach you, oh, the kingdom, you pray and the Holy Spirit come. That's it, you know. No, there are a lot of things. The will of God in everything. The will of God in your family lives, your spousal living, with your children, with everything. Your seven fields. You see, in church life, wherever, you know, when you're facing a difficulty, you, have, you had a failure in your life, you know, how do you look at it? You see, these are the kingdom of God. You know, let the kingdom of God descend upon your spirit. You got to see what God is doing. Then you, the angels will work, you restore your faith, you submit to God, and you see God turn the tables around. This is the mystery of the spiritual realm. You, know, you must learn this. You must learn this. You're never happy being a Christian. Why? Because you never understood the kingdom of God. What is it all about? That's why Jesus said, if I drive out demons with the Spirit of God, you drive out your frustration with the love of God. Same thing. What come? The kingdom of God come. If you don't drive that out, what come? The forces of darkness come. Then your situation gets worse and worse. You see? You must learn about the kingdom of God. Now, seven fields, you must know how to let the kingdom of God come upon your seven fields. And on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You see, Holy Spirit got to do with the kingdom of God. You must know how to rely on the Holy Spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Then you will see how you can use the Holy Spirit to drive away 
the demons, the force of darkness. And where the kingdom of God comes, everything will be prosperous and successful. You see, this is the thing. Now in verse 6, when they are together, they met him. They asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? You see, God is talking about kingdom of heaven. They are always thinking about the kingdom to Israel. It's the same thing. God wants to come to you with his kingdom. When the kingdom comes to you, it's everything. But you are only concerned about, Lord, what about this problem of mine? My family, my relationship. You see? You restrict God. And you, you restrict God in this thing. You see? That's why you cannot see God. When God overwhelms you, everything just goes in order. You see? So we restrict God in something, you never get an answer. Lord, A or B. Lord, this or that. Tell me. I've been praying. Three years, five years, never tell me why. You get what I mean? So the answer is what? You see, when the disciples ask God this kind of restrictive question, you see, what did God say? God answered them overwhelmingly. He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by His own authority. I don't tell you for a reason, meaning that. But what I want you to know is, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will receive power to overcome every problem when the Holy Spirit comes on you. you will, and then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in your Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So, I don't know how much they understand them. But after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hit him from their sight. And they were looking intently into the sky as he was going. You see, they were like drooling probably. Drooling, oh, Jesus ascended, you know, <laughs> that kind of feeling. It's like us lah, every time, you know, oh, amazing, awesome, magnificent, you know. Where is Jesus now? Did Jesus go up? He's going to come again? And He'll come to you through the Holy Spirit and lives in you. Isn't this more amazing? Why are you looking at the physical things? Why are you always looking at the physical atmosphere, physical awesomeness? No, don't look at that. You are awesome. You see, not that side. You see? That's why you see, what I say? We always go Pandai Karachu. We see the other time when the church was about set up, we saw the sunset, we saw that, wow, everything, you know, God prepared for us the jellyfishes day. Everything's so nice, but you don't get to see that every time. Okay? God showed that to you once in a while. But you have to see the Lord in you every time. In you. He values you all the time. You see? Even when you don't see sunset, <laughs> it's sunrise for you. You get what I mean or not? Okay? So, they were looking up intently in the sky. You see, when the two men dressed in white, the angels stood beside them, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? Meaning like, why are you daydreaming? Oh, why are you daydreaming about? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. And where is he now? In you right now. So you don't learn about how he is in you, how he empowered you. You learn nothing from the Bible. You see, because I gave you the Holy Spirit, he will be in you, okay, in you. And he will remind you of everything that I've said to you. He will teach you in all ways, all things, through all problems, in all difficulties. He will help you, empower you, Holy Spirit. And, and this is the thing I'm going to teach you about now. So, Jesus take 40 days, talk about the kingdom of God concretely, repetitively, 40 days. So that's why I have to come every two months. I come every two months again and again to remind, to reinforce repeatedly. You see, same thing. Actually, it's the same message. But you forget about it. That's why you go into problem. Right? So now, uh, you must know, oh, some of you say, why, Pastor, we always forget the word of God? Why? I remember it now. I resolute, I will remember it. But later on, you still forget. Yeah. Because why? Because of changing circumstances. You see, God, God allowed us to be tested in changing circumstances. You may enjoy victory in finances. Lord, I'm no longer worried about finance. But you cannot enjoy victory in your relationship with your children. You see? That is a thing that always makes you upset. 
are changing circumstances. Another kind of difficulty, another kind of disappointment. You see? So it always like that. Uh, to different people, you know, different people give us challenge. You see, I a pastor, you know, I face 80 people. 80 people give me 80 kind of challenges. <laughs> so wow. But I put it in my heart to learn everything that the Lord wants to teach me. If 12 people here, 20 people, you learn everything about each other, about how to have the kingdom of God come upon the whole church, how to complement one another. I tell you, you will enjoy a blissful family living. Some people don't understand why pastor always say, you know, love each other, compliment one another. You know, you, you, you must see each other's weaknesses as your strength. I keep saying all these things and people get tired about it. Why? I tell you, if you can do this, uh, you enjoy your relationship with your family members. People who don't enjoy bread and living, you know, they go home only, they also have a problem with their family. See, this is the thing. Because the force of darkness travels with you. <laughs> It travels with you, you know. It's not something, oh, okay, I don't like this church, I change the church. You go to the same, another church, you encounter the same thing. It's the same thing, okay? So if you try him over this problem now, right here in the situation you are facing, you try him over everything. Amen? So how do you try him? You got to know the will of God. God has shown his will to us in everything, every situation every circumstances so you take everything as a form of spiritual learning take everything as form of spiritual learning you understand learn you don't try to solve problem you don't put your focus on solving the problem learn lord what is your will if i do it your way lord you will work the angels will work okay you must learn this your focus must be here first okay you start dwelling on the problem that's it you lose Satan has took a step in front. He frightened you with the problem, you see? So you must know how Satan moves. Satan moves, you can know it where? From the way your spirit moves, from your perspectives. Hmm. Sometimes when I'm leading the service, you know, oh, one or two people down there snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are snoring. Oh. But, you see, I don't know why my eyes will keep turning there. I don't know why. I just want to look at other people. I keep noticing those people. Actually, those people are very peaceful. But I'm very uptight. <laughs> so, <laughs> I begin to think, why? Uh? Now I know. This is the force of the darkness. Diverted. Actually, if God's way want them to sleep, let them sleep in peace. Minister to the rest of the people. You see? You know what I mean? Minister to the rest. And let the whole church receive grace and those people are sleeping, wake up. Wow, wow, why, why is everyone so happy? Huh? Oh, what message you all received today? Huh? <laughs> you see, this should be the way. You got what I mean or not? I'm trying to tell you, if you can focus on the will of God, you'll not be distracted. You're distracted on the wrong things. You get angry, more and more angry about them. You know? And then you know, you're frustrated. Your messages all carry the kind of condemnation tone. You know? Everyone condemn, <laughs> you condemn. You got what I mean or not? So this is the way you have to learn the Holy Spirit. So you bring your problems home sometimes, parents. You bring your problems home to your kids, you know. Someone make you angry, now you make your kids angry. So you see, this is the thing. You don't know how to look at every situation as when God is in control. Seven fields. What is the field of God what, what, that has, He has given us? First one, oh. the church field. The field of the church. The field of the church. Oh. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 16. Yesterday I spoke about this. I took great pains to explain to you. Without this, listen up, nothing can be accomplished. Amen? Amen. Nothing. Because this is a spiritual battle. You cannot use your wits against Satan. What is the IQ of Satan? Six, six, six. <laughs> I always say that, right? Oh. Just a joke, lah. Six, six, six. six. Anyone with IQ more than 666 or not? Cannot. You need 777. Then you can win over <laughs> Satan, you see? So the church is the place where God reveal His will, reveal His wisdom, reveal His voice, His words, His guidance. So everyone value this church. I've covered this. Paul labored for the church. Post Apostle labored for the church. The early churches, they gather together and enjoy. Enjoy what? The favor of God and man. Oh, you see? 
the favor of God, amen, they enjoy this. So what, is, what are the two most important things in the church? Excuse me, what are the two most important things? I always say, listen up, uh, write it down. The pulpit and the, Charlene? The pulpit message, most important. And, and who? Yes, and the brethren. Okay? You love God? Yeah. God's word, right? Pupit is God's word. You love? Man, same thing. The Ten Commandments about that. So you cannot be, I love God, I love His message, but I cannot tahan the people bes person beside me, you know. I don't care, you know. I just live for myself. You know. Cannot. That means you haven't understand what is loving God. You love God, you love man. You love those people that He loves. And then, um, I keep stressing on this. Oh, love each other, come together. But today I have a thought, no. Oh, I want to tell you that. I'm afraid that if I go, uh, people will think, wow, Pastor Vincent always tells us to love each other, so we better do so. Or else he'll come back and rebuke us two months later. That's the wrong spirit again. You don't love, try to love each other just because Pastor Vincent tells you to. You must believe that your blessings come from each other. Amen or not? Amen. The person that you are disappointed with, unhappy with in this church could be the person who gets you out of your trial someday. Amen or not? Amen. Oh. You never know, no. I've seen things happening in the church, these two sisters quarrel, no. Then one day they realized that they became in laws. <laughs> <laughs> the children will date each other. This kind of thing I've seen before in the church, you know. Then how? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or not? These things happen. Then you realize, oh, you've been making enemies out of your kin. You know? So I want you to, to know that the person that you're unhappy with sometimes, you never know. Someday you get into trouble, trials, temptation. Or that is the person who could help you. Amen, huh? Because God put you together for a reason, the church. So you must believe us. I believe, right? Joel, you believe Charlene will be your blessings. Yes. Then you treat her well. And Charlene, same thing. Oh. So, yeah. Every time you drive past, oh, oh no, someone, you know, drive. Some people, you know, in the church, sometimes we, I've seen in my old church, people, in the members was like walking. People just drive past, don't care, you know. <laughs> the other members just drive past, well, this kind of thing. They are so individualistic. They don't know what God is doing. You see, but this kind of thing, I don't think will happen in CLCP. Lah, huh? But of course, on and off, there are people that disappoint us, you know. You try to look at their positive side. Mm. If a person is really downright useless or beyond hope he will if God has given up on that person let's take it this way God given up meaning that he, is, he has no hunger for the word for the gospel no, he will not remain in this church because this church is a church that preaches about God's word and Christ that anyone can stick with this church and stick to the word of God okay you can struggle to church but pastor always say if you can struggle and sit down here I'll bless you for that day I've never given up I've never given up anyone you see so people who leave my church uh, are people who later on I realize they don't actually believe what I say. Everything that I say about God, about this awesome God, they actually don't believe it. Oh, that's why they leave. So they can leave, <laughs> you see. But people who stay in my church, they are weak, but they know they need God. But no, they are weak. They cannot help it at times. These are the people I value, you see. That's why uh, people like Peter, John, this kind of people, the Pharisees cannot differentiate. They are actually the treasure of that era. You see, they cannot differentiate. Uh, but Jesus can differentiate. Okay, I want you guys to learn how to differentiate. If that is the person God never given up, uh, never given up hold on, you give him space and time, two years, three years, five years, you know, Okay, just wait for him, wait for her. You see? This is the way. And don't focus on that. Focus on the rest. You see? You get what I mean? So, when you have a fruitful church life, when you have a dynamic church life, 
what happened is you will be Holy Spirit filled. Chapter X, 1 8. You see? Chapter X, oh no, chap, no book of X, 1 8. You see? The purpose of the church is to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Always remember that. The purpose of the church, with the church, your faith, your perspective can be sustained. This is most important. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. When the apostles, especially Peter, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, what happens? The 15 nations gathered around him. 15 nations. You see? These are the things that happen. You don't say, Lord, I don't see myself blessing people. I don't see people coming to me. My family members hate me. No, you don't say that. Because the answer is, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, what happens is people gather because of you. Okay? Uh, you can be, have a lousy character. Sometimes, you know, you have some bad habits. People dislike you, you know. Uh, you're not so clean, lah. you know, very untidy, that kind of person. But when your Holy Spirit failed, hey, someone came to you, equally untidy. <laughs> so, so, find comfort with you. <laughs> Strangely, this kind of thing happens, <laughs> you see. So the answer is sometimes, I know there are a lot of things we have to change, you know, as a Christian, we have to change. But don't keep thinking, I change first, then God use me. Now, this is the wrong way of thinking. God use me now. If only I believe that I'm of value for the kingdom, now. I live with a peaceful and joyful heart, I enjoy the tranquil of God's word. That is the time you see, eh, strangely, God will send people of similar background to you and you minister to them. So I want you to learn this. Mm. The Holy Spirit, you say, come. Convicts you. Especially I want you to learn about how to be, how to conquer yourself. Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 21. Over there, the whole of Ephesians chapter 5 and ch chapter 4 later part, you can learn about how to live as children of the light. But chapter 5, verse 15 to 21 talks about this, you see. The Bible says over here, be careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Why evil? Because the disbelief culture is in this world. And do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Ah, the Lord's will, always remember. Do not get drunk. Anyone get drunk here? Not drunk by wine, but drunk by the world. Drunk by reverie. You see, these are the things that make you drunk. You know, the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, these are the things that make you drunk. Do not get drunk, but be Holy Spirit filled. Okay, listen up. What do you understand by Holy Spirit filled? No. Holy Spirit filled, chapter, chapter 1, verse 8. Holy Spirit filled, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Do not get drunk, but be Holy Spirit filled. No. Dominic, are you Holy Spirit filled? Now, how do you know? Voice of God in my head. Yeah, because right now, you're listening to the Word of God. God gave you a hunger spirit. Now, I'm preaching the Word of God. God gave me a spirit of focus and courage. Right? It's Holy Spirit filled. This is Holy Spirit filled. Later on, Okay, when you're going to study, how do you know your Chume? How do you know your Holy Spirit feel when you're studying? God give you a spirit of concentration. You don't think about TV, think about all programs, think about having fun, right? See, this Holy Spirit feel. Later on, we go and makan. The Holy Spirit give us a saliva. <laughs> it's Holy Spirit feel. You see, Holy Spirit feel happens in the most ordinary way. In everything you do, if you could see the will of God and follow suit, that is called Holy Spirit filled. When I'm with my child, whenever I teach them, I restore a fatherly image. Fatherly. I have a fatherly authority. So they don't play punk with me. <laughs> no. But I love them. Embrace them, you see? But when I teach them, I have this authority. They'll listen to me. When you are Holy Spirit filled, you give out this atmosphere yeah this thing your air around you, you know, people can feel it you know you are relevant 
You see, you're really relevant. I love to be with you. Oh, you always know how people feel. You'll be well liked. You get what I mean? Holy Spirit feel. Some people, when you talk about Holy Spirit feel, they always think about all oh, special circumstances, you know, extraordinary happenings, and they always think about this. And some people, you see, they always misunderstood the Holy Spirit. When they say, talk about Holy Spirit filled, some people always think they are Holy Spirit filled, but I felt they are weirdos. Weirdos. You know, many years ago, I was, uh, uh, we were having, you know, many years ago we had a church meeting, and then after the church meeting, a group of us, a group of brothers, we went out to the coffee shop to have a meal. And then there was among us a so called a more spiritual brother. Um, he is the leader among us, the spiritual one, like, I would say. Like, uh, so among us, so we sat together on a table. Uh, we ordered the food. Wow, nice food, man. After the meeting, we just want to enjoy. And then the brothers were about to give, give thanks and say grace. And then the brother said, um, excuse me, everyone, please listen to me. And um, do, you think, do you see everyone in this coffee shop here? Do you feel the compassion for them, for their souls? Do you feel that God wants us to pray for their salvation? <laughs> so he starts saying all these things, no, I think about eating, man. <laughs> so so mm, uh, some people cannot resonate with him because some are going to eat, some are just uh, want to rest. And, uh, so he starts saying all those spiritual stuff, things that we cannot outrightly reject, you know. So, uh, so can we just come together and pray for everyone in this coffee shop? You know, it's just like when you say, when we go to the <laughs> supper, Sunday, Sarah said, can we just pray for everyone? It's called pray for their souls and all that. I mean, he's talking about spiritual stuff, but it's not the right thing at the right time. You got to mean that. So the spiritual person talks about the right thing at the right time. It gives you the right feeling. You see? That is after fellowship, we should enjoy the fellowship with each other and you know, strengthen one another. You know, not about, not about praying for all the people you don't know, you know. But these are the people you know, they're sitting right beside you. You should bless them, you know, enjoy the favor of God with them, you see. So they say, they are weirdos. Doesn't mean you talk about spiritual stuff, you are spiritual. You understand or not? You must talk about the right thing at the right time. When I'm with my wife, you think I talk about spiritual stuff all the time, you see. Of course, sometimes I must show her some love, you see, uh, to be fun with her, bring her out to play, you know, that kind of thing. Of course, time to go to church, we have to go, you see. This is the thing I win. This is the way I win her over for Christ. Now, you must know the Holy Spirit. When you ask Holy Spirit feel the wrong way, even worse. Listen, I want to teach you about this, okay, so that CLCP will be the most glorious group of people in Penang. Amen. <laughs> wise, relevant, well-liked by everyone. People look at CLC, yeah, they are really Christians like Christ, you see? Um, three. Uh, and then, when you are Holy Spirit filled, you see, the church will affect yourself. And yourself will affect your family. Family. So, family is the third field that God has given us. This is your home, your loved ones, people that you were committed to for your whole life. Listen, why do you think you love your children? Why do you think you love your siblings? Because what? They are blood ties. Blood ties. That's why the Bible always talks about blood. Genealogy, you see? Blood ties are something that is given by God. You cannot separate it. You see? I can get angry with my dad, mom, or siblings, but I cannot hate them. You cannot, definitely. So, listen, that's why God has promised Family gospelization. You see, this is absolute Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your whole household will be saved. Amen or not? Amen. We'll be saved. Helen, hold on to this, huh? We'll be saved, man. Believe in the Lord Jesus, you and your household. The promise for family. Okay? The promise, this is the only promise for the family because they are your blood ties. So you believe it, you will see it your whole lifetime. You pray for them, God will not disappoint you. So, uh, family salvation. Now, I want to say, sometimes if you're not on good terms with your family members, sometimes this happens, you know. But there's a few things I want you to hold on to. Okay, three. First, you always believe that they will be blessed through you. Believe that. 
Even you quarrel with them, you believe they will be blessed through. They must be blessed through you. No one else. Because if you have come to the Lord, you are the chief priest. They must be blessed through you. Second, you restore your role in the family. You must know uh, everyone in the family has different role. You are the child in a family. You cannot act like a father or a mother. You get what I mean? The father must be like a father. You cannot be like a child. Or everything listen to the child. Oh, what? Uh, uh. <laughs> you know what I mean? You must, have, you must be the decision maker if you are the father or the mom. You see? If you are the husband, you know how to love your, uh, love your wives? No, God has told us that about the family, the way the angels work. In a family, if the woman is the head, something will be wrong. Even the woman is more capable than the man, but the man doesn't lead, the wife lead, something will go wrong. Because God created a man first, then the women. So the women must always fit in very nicely. Fit in. Even the, the women is smarter. You guys are very smart. Huh? Next time you marry a husband, more stupid than you. But make sure, huh? <laughs> make sure you know how to make him smart by submitting to him. Ah, listen up. Huh? <laughs> no, no, don't worry. Take home, he's smarter. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, don't worry. But you must... If you... I, uh, you go for nothing, come, go away, let me do it. Ah, you see, you will not do things well. Definitely, God will make you fail. And then your children will have identity crisis. Oh, how come ah, mother always scolding father? You see, this is bad for upbringing. Bad for upbringing. Even the husband, ah, mta, mta, anything also blur, blur, one. I also let him lead. You see, make him like a man. <laughs> you see, this is the way. <laughs> so you must restore your role well. So parents, ah, God also teach your parents. You don't embitter your child. Sometimes you cane them, yes, you should, but don't embitter them. Always compare them with others, you know, spike them with your words, you know, hypocrite. you know, hypocrite. Sometimes, you know, for me, when I teach my children, I admit my faults. If I get angry too easily or out of frustration, after that, I apologize. No, I know, my father is wrong, I know. No, maybe it's not your fault. Shouldn't hit you so hard for that. You see, I admit my faults, so they know. The Father is not perfect also. It's the Heavenly Father is, who is perfect. So you must, you must fit, restore your roles well. So the family feel. The, God has revealed all the will there, you see. So first, you believe they will be blessed through you. Second, you restore your roles. And then the third, you must learn to draw strength from one another, from each other. So you see, I bear the burden for my whole church. So I go home only, I find comfort with my wife, you know, his, her understanding. Yeah, this kind of thing, draw strength from them. Uh, sometimes, you know, my wife give me timely reminder. Because we guys are sometimes too strong. <laughs> so my wife tell me, hey, relax, lah, Pastor. Sometimes your members are doing very well already, you know. Uh, let go a bit, lah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, this is the way my wife remind, remind me, you see. My, because the wife always have the soft side of them, you see. Or probably because I'm the person shepherding the whole church, so I get affected easily. You get what I mean? But my wife does, is a third party. She look at the whole situation from another point of view. So, Jim is very important. Jim must compliment Sarah in this way, you see. Uh, because the person leading will always sometimes not make the right judgment at times, you know. So the person beside them give the timely reminder or from another perspective, you know, look at a person from another perspective, look at the whole church from another perspective. You see, this is the way. So family assist one another. Complement. Draw strength from each other, okay? So this is the three things, okay? You got it? Uh, you don't get it, you hear from the video. <laughs> and, then, and then the feel of your workplace. Mm. How many of you doing business here? Can you give me a show of hand? Uh, one, two, uh, okay. How, how many of you working as an employee? Uh, Irene? The rest? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not working. The rest, the rest is in, is in school studying. <laughs> okay, the workplace and the school. This is, <laughs> the, this is where you spend eight hours and nine hours, you know, uh, where you're there, <coughs> yeah. You must get the will of God there. The workplace, imagine, oh, you are the glorious child of God. You spend eight, nine hours a day in these places. 
You think God wouldn't want you to be successful there? Of course, definitely, right? So the way to be successful also, one, two, three, you see? Huh? Mm. Quickly, I'm going to cover this. First, you've got to set apart. The first thing is got to set up. What do you mean by set apart? Say, you go to workplace, people all look for what? Want to perform themselves, you know, get increment, money, you know, that kind of purpose. They go there for with this purpose in mind only. School, everyone looking out for grades, want to get good grades, make good friends, you know, friends. People are bothered. Uh, students, they are always looking for these things, and these things concern them. But you go there with a set apart purpose to glorify God. To live in God's will. Okay? So you must have a set apart mindset first. Okay, set apart. You don't go for money. Set apart. You go for the kingdom. To receive testimony to bless others. Then second, so after you set apart, second you got to differentiate. Uh, because, you see, your attitude is set apart already. So you will not be impacted or influenced by all these things. So now you can differentiate who are the sheep of God. The sheep of God. Ah, this is where you spot them. Ah, this person I can minister to, bring to church wherever, you know, that kind of thing. And impact them for Christ. And now, you want to ask me the question now, is it important to do well in a career or studies? Yes, of course. So, you, you, so you got to do your best. If you're a student, do your best in your study. Right, Jeremy, huh? make sure you get all your A's. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just a challenge, la. try your best. Do your best. God will take responsibility. All right? You can say, okay, I go there, set apart, differentiate, you know, just for evangelism. But um, like our dear doctor friend here, you know, say, never mind, just go for this, you know, patient come, okay, just evangelize to them, pray for them, go. <laughs> You'll be sacked <laughs> very soon. <laughs> you see, you get me now. <laughs> all right? So you can do your best and learn all the clinical skills. And I always tell him, and be the best doctor, you see? At least I learn the things that God teach me. Want me to know. You see? Student, so uh, if uh, Shuni is a dance instructor, you know, yeah. Yeah, do your best in that, those things, see? And you, this is the way you testify God also. You see? Uh, so, workplace. Oh, always remember that. This is the way you conquer the fields here. And now, five. What is it about? The next few that God has given us is the few of meetings, where you get blessings of meetings. You see, Penang is a, is a small place. There's a lot of blessing meetings you will enjoy. Uh, you see, even right here, all the time you go out and buy things, buy food, wherever, you bring your children out, you will meet people who are curious about God, curious about church, or about the gospel. You see, these are blessings of meetings. You meet people every day. Now, if you believe the Holy Spirit dwells in you, wherever you go, the people you meet, man, it's important, you see? You make connections. Like, like, Jesus, okay, like Jesus, he went through the town of Samaria. He met the Samaritan women, okay, you see? He purposely go through there, and then these women came, and they met him. And he converted her. Apostle Paul went to Philippi. When he was at Philippi, he went to a place of prayer where people gathered to pray. And then he met who? Lydia. And then the Philippi church was set up then, you see? So, listen up again. Blessings of meetings. You see, Paul went to a place of prayer. So you always make sure. You want to get, some people say, Pastor, you always say blessing of meeting. I don't meet anyone. I don't meet anyone credible. Hunger for the gospel. Why? Because you go to the wrong place. Paul went to the place of prayer. You always go to discotheque. <laughs> for instance, karaoke, discotheque, or going there with the attitude to have fun, reverie, you know. You all want to have blessings of meeting, you meet people who are hunger for the gospel. No, you're not. You meet wolves. <laughs> you get me now? <laughs> so, blessings of meeting. You see, it's, it's, it's how you see God. You see, if you have Holy Spirit filled, you will also know to go to the right place. You, know, you always bear in mind, you know, there are some places you don't feel like going so much, you see? For instance, you always go for movies. Every week, some people go for movies every week. Uh, we're talking about movies now. Oh, Pastor Vincent can go movies now. Of course, no problem. But some people need to go every week. Every week, two times a week. So people, you start to see people, uh, 
who loves movies, who loves to fantasize, like to see movies, fantasize, thinking they are the hero, then after the movie, back to square one, yeah, that kind of thing. You see? So these are the places, you see, go once in a while, you know, by the Holy Spirit guidance, not, not every time, you see. Always end up at the right place, you get the right meeting, amen. And then, what is the next few? Is the local region, you see. Local regions, this is uh, like the places where Paul went to, like the Little Asia, uh, like the Macedonia, uh, these places uh, where your church is situated, the place in Penang, the place where you live, you see. I want to tell you that, you see, um, don't doubt that the whole Penang one day will come to know this Christ message that we have preached about. Okay? It will happen. It will happen. Some people are talking about us. Something <laughs> I tell you. Penang is a small place. The word spread around. But you don't expect this to come suddenly like a miracle. For this to happen, you need to gather now. Gather among you. You like to share about Christ. Be proud of your church. Be proud of your pastor. With the message, you know, you take it seriously. Confirm it. And then you see people, you minister to them. Or, you know, let your joy impact them. Let your tranquil affect them. You see, these are the things that will happen when time passes by. When time passes by, you see, I have people in my church, you know, not people who come to my church, they are from other churches. They say, Pastor, can you teach us about this Emmanuel message? And we want to bring them back to our church. They felt the church, their own church is lacking in this, you know. Many of them suffering in spiritual burnouts. Even the pastors, the elders are like that. So they came to me and asked me to hold another meeting. You know. But I said, I need to pray because I'm so busy. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But these kind of things will happen among you. Okay, it will happen among you. But you always remember, you must continue. Oh, you don't expect this to just fall from the sky. You know, this happened seven years when we, we set up the pulpit, the altar. You know, there's a lot of uh, challenge I've given to my brethren. Uh, some encouragement, sometimes rebuke, you know, that kind of thing. And we keep on following the pulpit, keep on gathering for the Lord, and this happened one day. Okay, so never miss, huh? When after I go, your attitude must be, Lord, at least, Lord, I want to sustain the meetings. Once in a while, no, I can't make it, never mind. But sustain it, all right? This, this is the place where you find lives, you see? Never treat your church life as an extra curriculum. No? Extra curriculum. Yeah, CCA, right? And they call it extra curriculum. And this is not the main thing, you see. You do that, you never, in, you never see yourself in the centrality of God's Word. The Bible, you see, written with a, with a central message, central figure. Of course, there are a lot of Christians in this world. Some only come to the Lord just for fun, just go to church for fun, you know, that kind of people. Some were never willing to die. Like the rich young man came to Jesus. Jesus, what can I do to have eternal life? You only want eternal life. That's it, okay? To be saved, that's it. But Jesus said, sell everything you have, come follow me. You follow me, you not only have eternal life, eternal crown. And this life you never lack. What you have now, you'll lose it someday. What Jesus man is that, you see? But you couldn't see it. Okay, just go his own way. But Jesus loves him. Jesus loves all his children. But there are some really called to be the central figure. You must know. Okay, these are the people that will triumph over their seven fields. The rest, they will always be affected by the worldly things, worldly culture in these seven fields. In the Bible, there are people like Abraham, there are people like Lot. You got what I mean? Isn't it? Okay, so Lot, in the end, God still loves him, preserve his life, but you know, he lived a failing Christian life, you see? But people like Abraham prosper and prosper. Amen. So, and then, when you have done this long enough, you realize you'll be in the world evangelism platform. And people outside Penang will all be listening to your message, to your testimony. Imagine, you know, next time, thousands of people will read Elaine's and Helen's blog a day. Wow, every day, thousands of click, no? Thousands of click, wow. People waiting only, hey, when is your next blog? No. <laughs> this will happen, you see? This will happen, but you got to do it consistently. Even people don't read it. Even people don't read it. Ah, what is it all about? Oh, I'm writing this. Stupid. I'm writing for myself only. <laughs> don't look at that. Keep doing it. Share about your weakness or so. You know? Share about it genuinely. What you experience in the Lord. And then you see how God will work. Amen? And you know how our dear Michelle, you know, people will come to know about, wow, how you manage your child, Liu. 
He came to church, initially have a hyperactive problem, but now you see, look at this child, you know, he grew. So these are the testimonies that people want to hear, you see. Mm. You see, God is faithful. God is faithful to those who reveal Him and take His testimony seriously. So, every one of you, take yourself, take the promise of God. Huh? Uh, so there are tough times. When, you see, sometimes God makes you go through trials. But you always remember, if you have this in mind, you know, I'll get testimony through the trials. Our dear Irene, have a, our sister Bless is having a measles and all that. And it's difficult for mom to take care of her and that kind of thing. But Irene is new to the faith, only one year plus, and I've seen her grow, you know, not less than one year. And see, we will be hearing about testimony. You know, how you converted from Roman Catholic, same for Helen, you see. And people want to know why. People want to know why. What is the difference that you have experienced? You cannot tell people, hey, Jesus is good. Mary, no, no good. <laughs> you cannot tell people that. You, know? you know what I mean? Uh? What's the difference after you come to Christianity? What's the difference where after you know the only way is Jesus? You see, there must be testimony. So, listen, uh, so you got to bear in mind the seven things here. Seven things. Uh, follow this timetable. You follow this timetable, this is called God-driven. You must always know God-driven. We want to lead a God-driven. You follow the timetable, world evangelism will happen ultimately. Just like Singapore Life Church, I told you, seven years. It's seven years, okay? Not seven months. Seven, seven years, everyone follow the pulpit, pray for the pastor, the pastor love everyone, intercede for everyone. And what now? The message goes to America, China, New Zealand, Malaysia. You see, this kind of thing happened seven years, okay? Not seven months. So, God... It's always looking for people who follow faithfully. Ah, always remember, follow faithfully, not do great things. And God is not looking out for people who do great things. People who follow faithfully. Now, second, how now? I always talk about how now. How do I impact my seven fields? Hmm. You see, my brethren always say, uh, Pastor, you should improve on your handwriting. I say, you believe me, man. One day, people with good handwriting so try to imitate my handwriting. <laughs> okay. How do I impact my, impact my seven fields? Um, uh, seven fields. Listen up. First, very important, I'm going to give you the step now. Huh? Everyone knows you have said seven few to conquer. Some of you stuck here already, family problem. Some of you can't even get past yourself. Still struggling with church life, you see? Now you want to conquer. First, you must absolutely believe that because Christ is in you, you are already, you are already the main character in your seven fields. You are already. Because Jesus has accomplished. It's finished. You see, this is the message that I never heard throughout the first 10 years of my Christian life. Never. Pastor will always come and rebuke me, correct me, tell me what to do, what not to do. But they never tell me I'm the main character. <laughs> you see, you never heard that before until you met Pastor Vincent, right? I tell you, this is real. This is real. You don't wait till I'm somebody, then you are the main character. You see, you're always deceived like that. When God first called Abraham, the first promise is to say, I will make your name great. You'll be the source of all blessing. All those who bless you, I'll bless him. All those who curse you, I'll curse him. You see, main character. Even when Abraham first came to the Lord, he has nothing, he knows nothing, you know, he just followed the Lord. It's just like we convert and became a Christian. That is the time God says, you know, you are converting to become the main character. You see, the promise is for you. The Bible talks about this. Ruth. She has nothing. You know the story of Ruth? Nothing. No husband, no children. Just follow the mother-in-law. You know? But because she followed the God of her mother-in-law, she's convicted to follow the God of her mother-in-law. And 
she became the main character, you see? Everything she was became the most beautiful testimony. It's a widow became the great-grandmother of King David, Ruth. See, the story of Bible is about this. Main character right from the start, okay? You don't get past this. Sorry, you don't get all these things. We, we, our problem is, we always think, main character, people start thinking, oh, maybe people like Pastor Vincent, main character. Uh, always think like that, right? Uh, this dynamic preachers, main character. And you students always think, I love people who, who are do well in school, you know, get all A's, they're like main character, you know, Christian also, uh, get all A's also, or everything also good, you know. So you think they are like main character. You feel these people are more like main character, right? Our brother Chito was always tell him, oh, those people, doctors, specialists, uh, like main character. No, no, definitely not. The most common doctor who is humble before God is the main character. In fact, you are already, in fact, you are already the main character in Christ, you see? That's why Jesus came uh, and gave us a very paradoxical <coughs> teaching. No? We don't understand why he came and he go, he is not purposely going for people who fail in life. No, I'm not saying if you fail in life, you are the main character. Not that. But he recognized people like Peter, John, though unschooled, ordinary. But because they can respond to the gospel, they are the main character already. So God can differentiate them. You see, <clears throat> even when they have nothing. So when you have nothing, you have nothing, it's not a sin. But if you feel lousy and low self-esteem just because you have nothing, that's a sin. <laughs> you see, you got to mean that. Uh, it's a sin. Because God has given you the most awesome identity. You don't care about that. What kingdom, what promise, I don't know. What child of God. All I see is I have nothing. You see, devalue the gospel. You are the main character now. Okay, now. Right now. Second, uh, now I'm coming to this, huh? Then some people want to ask me, so Pastor Vincent, you always say main character. Yeah, main character never die on, you know. You see? You see the movie, right? Main character? Well, go through so many problems, trials, tribulation, you know, almost kill. Oh, almost. <laughs> but ultimately also, come back, he's the man. You see, main character is like that. But now you want to ask the question, but you say main character impact the world, impact the family. So what kind of, at least we must have something to impact, right? Something to impact. Oh, we say Helen, main character. Helen can play the piano well, of course, main character. Huh? <laughs> people always think like that, you see? Uh, people always think like that. But what have I? Nothing. Where's my gift, my talents, anything? So what did God give you? What did, if God made you a main character, what is the thing that God has given you to win over the world, to win over your family, your workplace. What is that? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone want to try or not? Joel, want to try? <laughs> You've been listening to my message for so long, but you cannot second guess what I'm trying to say, right? The thing that God has given you to win over the world is your very own condition now. What you have now, God will use it. <laughs> you cannot mean that. What you have now, God will use it. Mm. You don't believe it? This is called the covenant of God. Covenant. Oh. I'll give you an example. Peter, John, unschooled, ordinary, they follow Jesus. Am I right? Hey, these people, huh? then one day Pentecost came. They are still unschooled, still ordinary, but they came up and speak about the gospel. Everyone almost fainted. <laughs> they are unschooled. They are ordinary. But how can they proclaim this gospel so clearly? If they are professor and doctorate, people are um, not so amazed. I mean, they are professor. Nah. They are parasites. Nah. They know everything. Nah. <laughs> What's the big deal? You get me? Nah. But people are amazed. Why? Because of their condition. You get what I mean? Uh, whatever you are, God will use that. This is called promise. You see? Wherever you are, wherever you were, God will use that. This is called promise. And listen, 
I want to drill this. This is the most difficult. I tell you, this is the most, you always don't believe this. That's why you have problem. <laughs> Am I right? The most common or ordinary doctor, just be at the right place at the right time. You see, that's it. She done, he done great things. So what do I do? I don't know. You just be at the right place at the right time. All you need to do is to believe and then God will bring you there. Right place, right time. You, you got what I mean? It's the same thing. Charlene, see you brought Geraldine when you're in, in your down moments. When you're most down, you brought your father. You know, you're quarreling with them and I brought them here. Ah, sit down here. Okay, come. <laughs> you come in different car, no? <laughs> came in different car, no? You see, this happens. This happens, you see? So, but the problem is when you don't believe this, you're always looking into your problem, looking into your, yeah, you see? You will always overwhelmed by your own problem. So I want, I want you to see this very clearly. It's not just having a smooth sailing, successful life, then you could be an effective minister. People say, we CLCP, uh, we Christ Life Church Penang, special church, only broken, People are here all broken, <laughs> wounded. <laughs> so, come here. This is the best condition. Uh. If this church is so good, uh, everything is so nice. Or well, the music so nice, everything. Uh. People will come because of all this, the programs. But you love this church because you know why. You're attracted because you are wounded. Amen. You stay here. Then you don't know why all the wounded people come. And then as you progress, uh, Hey, you realize one day, how come we have the best guitarist? Hey, how come we have the best pianist? How come we have the best of everything? You see, then you look back, you realize, actually, we are the best all the time. <laughs> you see, you know what I mean? But you don't look out for these signs, these things first, you see. All you know is, all you know is, we believe, Lord, we are the main character in Jesus Christ, and you use everything that we are, or we were. You see? And then, and then God works in such a way without you knowing it. You see, everything is the best already, you see. Mm. So, uh, this is the most important thing. Oh. If you can get past this, you will get past everything. You know my second man, uh, uh, Brother Wen Kang, uh, Deacon Wen Kang, yeah, you saw him uh, lots of times, right? Oh, He has a tough life. And that's why his hair all turned white. <laughs> then, the one day my aunt from China came, wow, you are the man for China. <laughs> People respect you when you go to China. <laughs> it's all white hair. The elderly ministry, is it? the elderly respected him. This is really like an elder. Small size, small frame, but white hair. You see? He always tells the wife, I'm not going to dye my hair. Everyone in the church told him, you better dye your hair, lah, brother. Doesn't look nice, no, white hair. He said, no, I'm not dying. There's a reason. This is my glory. <laughs> my glory, my wisdom. It shows how seasoned I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then, when he believed that, no, I don't know why. Initially, I also feel, mm, I told my wife, hey, wife, maybe you go and tell, it's not for me to say, like, you go and tell our brother Wen Kang, maybe he should dye his hair. Lah. Uh, I told my wife, <laughs> Then later on, when he believed that this is his glory, no. Then one day he went up the stage, ah, oh, wow. It's better than black hair, man. <laughs> so, so I start to say it this way also. Because he carried himself the way that he's proud of it. And then you see, oh, then everyone f start feeling, wow, white hair probably also uh, trendy. Uh. <laughs> so, so this is the way you see. Your very own condition. Are you going to chase after the world, chase after the trend, you see? It's like, you're not covenanted, you chase after all these things, you see? Let people chase after you, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because you have Christ. Amen or not? <clears throat> hey, don't laugh, laugh only. Huh? Then after that, ah, you'll cry, you know, my problem, you know, my condition is so lousy, you know. Believe, huh? Believe that, you see? Ah, this is the third thing I'm going to stress now. You believe that you're the main character of this era. If you're in family, you're the chief priest of your family. In your workplace, you know, God moved your workplace, your company because of you. And God used your very own condition. Everything, your roles, everything, okay? Your background, your condition, okay? Now, you have known this. You have got your identity right, your purpose right, 
The third thing is you got to get your step right. Step by step now. Now this is the thing that we always fail. Step by step. Uh, if you have all the great vision but no step, this is called daydreaming. <laughs> you understand? Uh? Daydreaming. Just like the disciples. You see, the angel said, what are you looking at? Didn't Jesus promise you everything for that 40 days? No, go back. What to do? Gather and pray. Hold on to this covenant and see the Lord's work. You see, this is the step. You don't think, you know, you don't think, oh, you got a vision now. Oh, let's go back to our own house, own home, you know, and live our own lives and then things will happen. Pentecost will come. No, that will not happen, you see. So the step thing is, is the most important. Step. Right? So, you know, Norman, why do you do business? Why do you sing? Mm. Why? You know right from the start, it's for the gospel. He knows right from the start, right? It's not to be famous, not to be prosperous, for the gospel. So, I want to sing for the Lord. Right? You sing for the Lord. You do the business for the Lord. Learn everything that the Lord teaches you. So now, you want to glorify God in this? The most important thing is your step. Even while I'm busy with this, struggling with this, how I anchor myself to the word, to the pulpit. You see, this is way, the way you move, move on. See, this is how you would really receive the real miracle in your life. You see? For Brother Norman, you see, I, I would say, you'll still be successful even though you, you don't anchor to the word. But if you don't anchor to the word, you are successful. Your success has nothing to do with the kingdom. You see? When you anchor to the word, everything that you are, every process you went through, the failure, will all become testimony. People want to hear about those things. You see? So you bring the word, you bring the testimony. So this is most important. So that's why I always emphasize on the step. The step is most important. Oh, so our students here, I know um, this SPM, taking SPM, who's taking SPM? One, two. Show me taking SPM. No, 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 sorry, sorry. You're too young. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Charlene and Geraldine, you're taking one exam? A level, STPM. Let me give you an advice, huh? Don't put your hopes on coming to Singapore. Put your hopes on glorifying God with your grades. Okay? You learn that, okay? Take home already. Suffer the trials for you already, right? So, <laughs> so now that I learned the lesson, I know. Don't put the hopes on coming to Singapore. Put the hopes on glorifying God with the gospel, you see? Then don't lose focus on the pupil. Hmm? And for Take Hong, Take Hong, right? Your step. You go to KL, you're going to go there, right? Find a church, okay? Find a church. If there's a campus church, you know. Uh, but I know you'll always be back here, lah, huh? Every month, are you coming? Are you coming back every month or every week? I'm very schedule, okay? So you come back every month, you will stay here, okay? You will come be coming back here. Over there, find someone worthy. Find a church worthy and stay there, no matter what, okay? Even though not like CLCP, also if it's a church of God, Orthodox Church, attend the church life there. And learn the ways of a different church and a different experience for yourself. But you become, you attend church, right? Because you're a Christian, not because you belong to CLCP, no, I'm right? And so, and then I always emphasize you need the step. Why I say the step? You see, without the steps, you never see fulfillment. We always want the... The problem with us, we want fast results. Fast results. But we miss the step. God takes great pains to explain to us. You see, the parables, the good and faithful servant, the wise virgin, right? Am I right? They prepare for the banquet, the wedding banquet. Why? They prepare the oil and all. These are called faithful following. They know the bridegroom is coming prepare the oil. Okay. They know the master is coming back home. They manage their talent. See, this is called faithful following. God is looking for people who know how to go step by step faithful following. The best thing about my, my deacons are, you know why I make them deacons? They're faithful. <laughs> I always see this thing. Um, those people who say, wow, Pastor Vincent, I want to impact the world. Like you, <laughs> impact the regions. Okay, show me your step. <laughs> this one, uh, two weeks only puncture already. Uh. Cannot. 
I know, sure cannot one. You see? That means you haven't understood the truth yet. You haven't understood where, where, is, where God is leading you, you see? So, um, if you get your step right, every two months, I tell you, every two months you will see evidence. Every two months you don't have to go through the same trials again. Okay? Some of you, I believe, you have breakthrough after this. Amen? Amen? Some of you. Because I see the word get into you. Okay, later you may forget a while, but it will come back again. It will come back. So, anything that you hear right now, you know, Lord, I'm weak in this, or I'm weak in this, or I'm weak in, or I'm weak in everything. <laughs> so, Lord, I know now. I rest a little before you. So, that is the thing that God will mow you for the next two months, and you will see evidence. And then the next time Pastor Vincent comes, you will invite me into your car, Pastor Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> so the evidence okay four and then <clears throat> you need a daily schedule uh, you need a daily schedule of seeking seeking the Lord's will mm. daily schedule when you say step right we want to make sure we talk about our daily conversation daily walking with God daily walk with God daily schedule so how do you get David says I always set the Lord upon me so the Lord right I always set the Lord before me how do you set the Lord before you you got to do your fixed time prayer and when you pray your fixed time prayer please you must learn to pray like a main character you get what I mean? Lord, solve my problem. Lord, give me my needs. No, this is not. Lord, give me a heart to study, to glorify you. Okay? This is called main character. You see, you are praying with your purpose, your, your identity. Lord, change your brother, change your sister. Don't make him so, uh, let him be less inconsiderate. You know? No, no, don't say that. Lord, Give me the love to embrace him, embrace her. You see? Give me the strength, the wisdom to change a person. Now you must pray like that. This is called the prayer of a main character. You ask for the right thing. Your prayer is purpose driven. You see? So, your fixed time prayer, you must pray right. God is revealing things to you. Why do you have to pray daily? Because God is with you daily, 24 hours in all things. So, Fixed time, uh, your morning especially, and night, most important. Morning, you don't see the Lord, you don't see the Lord for the whole day, definitely. Even the children also, you see? That's why Sarah today say, this morning you woke up, you know, tell the child, you know, uh, give, embrace him, and then let him feel the love of the Lord. The whole day, you know, he became quite mild, you see? You listen to the adults and all. Yeah, this is the thing. When you see the Lord in the morning, your whole day, you know, you will, you will, be, you will control your temperaments. You know, you start to see how the Lord works in your lives. You know, you'll be gentle in your spirit. You see, these are the things. Morning and night. At night, you think back about how the Lord has guided you for the whole day, what you have done for the whole day, and you give thanks to God, and know you have reaped a harvest. But in the afternoon, afternoon is the time where you realize you start to lose strength, you get frustrated, you need to recharge. So, every time you come to the Lord, seek His will. Now, people want to ask me, how to seek the Lord's will? Listen, huh? how to seek the Lord's will? The Lord convicts you through three ways. Three ways. The Word, Word of God, the Spirit. Okay, your Spirit. You think of something, you think of the Word of God, do you feel the tranquil, the peace, the joy, the liberty, you see? Spirit and the circumstances. Third, Word, Spirit, circumstances. Three things. God show you. Fixed time, meaning what? Fixed time prayer, you seek the Lord's Word, you seek the Lord's will consistently, daily, three times, four times a day, you know, to sustain your faith. So that, so that, you can follow the Lord continuously. This is called continuous prayer. Continuous meaning you can live in His will, do His will, you know, consistent or continuously. Be a good father, mother, be a good child, 
be a good worker consistently, continually, you see, in your daily living, full of wisdom, full of joy, peace, you see, continually. You see, you want to be successful, God wants you to be successful continually. Okay, not only in church, right? Then comes sometimes you face with some very troubled moments, uh, very troubled moments, you're very down, very disheartened. That is the time God says, you must go to Him and pray concentratingly. This is concentr concentrate prayer or focal prayer, meaning you seek the Lord's will focally, focally. Lord, there must be a reason. Lord, this tribulation, this trial, there must be a reason. Seek Him. Quiet in your heart. One day, two day, three. Sometimes you're very troubled, you just take leave from your work. Uh. Take leave, just go to somewhere quiet, stroll, look upon the Lord, you know. Find out what are the things, Lord, you want to deal with me? What are the things you want me to let go? You know, these are the things. Concentratingly. So that you can resume your normal life and live with joy, wisdom, continuously. So you see, fix time continually. Come troubled moments, trials, concentratingly, so that you can enjoy the law continually. You see? This is called daily schedule. You must learn this daily schedule. Because what, what I'm talking about, some people don't understand what Pastor Vincent is talking about. What? Because you know, you are living in the spiritual realm. Spiritual realm. You agree, right? You believe. The angels and the demons are working all the time. Sometimes you feel very down. Very down. Why? The forces of darkness is coming for you. Sometimes unfortunate things happen in your family. You know, you get very disheartened, very negative. Why? Forces of darkness. And so there are a lot of quarrels and conflicts in the family. This is the time you must not quiet yourself. Okay? You have a lot of grudges. You have a lot of, or some normal, normal moments, you know, normal days. You make sure you keep in step with God through fixed time prayer. You see? So that you can live a victorious life continually. So, you, from your spirit, you will know how the angels, how the demons, they are working, they are mobilizing, you see. You see, this is the thing. You, you can only know the spiritual realm through your spirit. And through your spirit. You don't deal with this, you will fail. Because why? When you are feeling, feeling down, feeling frustrated and all, you, see, you don't deal with this, after that, you know, you get worse. When you get worse, you pass this problem to the person beside you. You see, or you will, you, you will do something wrong or whatever, you know. Some people, you know, you see, people say, some pastors are, wow, they're so dynamic. And then they fall into sin, what, adultery, and or, what, they commit suicide. All oh, this kind of thing happened to them. Why? Yeah, they can be a pastor. They're talking about the word. But do they know things of the spirit? I'm asking. You will know the temptation is coming for you. You will know, you know, some very negative perspective is tormenting you. You will know. And that is the time you need, you need to know more important than anything else is to pray, is to seek the Lord's will and drive out the demon. Let the kingdom come upon you again so that you will see your situation with a new perspective. Then you will triumph. You see, you cannot let it remain there. You see, you remain there, it becomes wounds. It becomes hurts. It becomes strongholds in you. Okay? So that's how you heal yourself. I'm coming back next year to talk about a uh, healing message. So I uh, want the church to probably, you know, really pray and focus on healing for next year's message because I'm coming with the 10 healing message. There's a lot of things here in our lives that are not healed. We know the gospel, but we never use the gospel to heal ourselves. You know, when you, are, when you always meet God face to face every day and you deal with all your problems, your inner problems, you're healing yourself. The strongholds is going away. You know, some parents, you know, they never say a kind word to their children all their lives. The moment they talk to the kid, hey, Hey, go and bathe up. Oh, something like that. <laughs> the tone is like that. Since young. Oh, study already or not? Wash, wash your hand already. Or? Hey, uh, like that. This is a stronghold, you know. Hey, you talk to other kids. Hey, hi. Oh, no. You talk to other kids. Very nice. Have you washed your hands? You know. Then talk to your own kid. Different. Then I, I scolded the mother. Why you talk to your kid like that? He said, Pastor, I also don't know. I cannot change. He said, can you tell your kid, hey, hi, how are you? She said, if I do that, uh, 
that day he will faint. <laughs> Just used to it already. Used to it. So the child also a lot of bitterness because the parents treat them like that. You see? So when the mother and son come to church, you know, and they're melted by God's word, you know, they're contrite before God, and these things go. Once again, they reflect and reflect, and the word of God hit them again and again. They realize they're, in, they're instilling wounds on each other, and then they let go of the, all these things. You need time, you see? But the word must be there. And come a day, you know, the normal relationship restore. Yes, this is the way. Healing, healing. People who don't pray, huh? Every day don't pray, you know, they will not have healing. Because they just react to situation. They will just react to problem. People, people insult them, people give them problem, you know, they just get frustrated. So they never deal with that part of their spirit. You see? Healing. Uh, I'm very cautious. I'll never let strongholds stay in me. If someone make me very disappointed, see, someone make me dis very disappointed, I will pray until, pray until what? I can change the person? No, I can accept the person. I accept him already, I won. Am I right? You want to change? No, no, you have to wait for him to change or her to change. When, Lord, when? You know, you get more frustrated. You see? You don't want to change your parents, change your siblings, or change your, the, your brothers, no. You pray until, Lord, I know you love me beyond everything else. So I'm not going to let this bother me. I'm going to love the person you love. I'm going to accept the person you put beside me. Once you accept that, you have him healed. You have been healed. You see, this is the way God healed you. And I tell you, when you're healed like that, huh, God will deal with that person. <laughs> you see, this is always the way. Because God's concern is you. If you don't get healed, what for I change that person? You meet the same kind of situation of people again. You get wounded again. You see? Ah, oh, now, now you know the, the dynamics, you see, of the spiritual things. You see? So, how do I impact my seven gifts? This is the way. No. So, I tell you, you get all this spiritual know-hows right. It is more important than you becoming successful, doing great things for the Lord. No. Oh, you evangelize to your family members, you know, wow, you stand on the world evangelism platform to, to preach. Actually, no. Spiritual know-hows are like that. Yesterday I was telling Joel, you learn something about the Spirit. You know how to see God's will in this kind of situation. You never lose it again. Am I right? You have success, you can lose it the next moment. Right? You have money, you can lose it the next moment. But spiritual know-how is something you get, you never lose it. You okay, believe it. Okay, this is, that's why this is the treasure. The treasure is in the unseen things. If you pursue this, you'll be really successful. You know, the seven fields, these are not simple things, no. Satan have their strongholds there, you know. Some people have family problems all their lives, see. The strongholds is there. How do you know your family have strongholds? Say, some of you, you go back home, you look at your spouse, you look at your parents, the moment you look at them, you are frustrated already. Ah, even before you talk, no. Even before you all communicate, just see the face and you're sick. You know, that's stronghold. That is a stronghold already. So that is the part God wants to heal us. Okay? Um, these are real things. And, but God, I praise God, God has given us His Word, you see? Why God give us His Word so sharply? Because God wants to heal us. He wants to heal us, you see? Okay. Now, last part, uh, last part. Mm. I'm coming to the end. Oh. When you get all these things right, when you start equipping yourself in all these truths, you will start to receive real evidences. Real evidence. What is a real evidence, everyone? What is the first and foremost evidence? Listen, huh? What? Anyone can? I'll treat him for supper later. Anyone want to try? Aiden? What is the first one? God? Speak to you. Face to face. 
this is the most important. God speak to you face to face, you see. In fact, God doesn't hide things from us, but because of our spiritual problems, our own desire, own mindset, we cannot hear Him. But people like Moses, Abraham, you see, these are the people, they have been faithfully walking with God for some time already. So their spiritual problems gone, they are healed, they can hear God anytime. The moment God speaks to them, they can let go of their desire. They can let go of their own mindset. You see, they are so sensitive to the spirit prompting already. Some people, God is shouting at them already, they still blur. You know, mother headed, no, 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 no. Some people just, just listen and know, you see a circumstance, you know, God is talking to you, you know, you just let go, submit. You know, Lord, I know what you're telling me. You see, these are the most blessed people. They can see the Lord face to face, you see. I want you people to become like that, you see. You people like that will be able to enjoy every wisdom, perfect gifts from above. Uh, you will never lose this one, I tell you. This one you will never lose. People like Moses, he see God all his life. You get a good husband and you will lose a good husband also, I can tell you. <laughs> but you never lose God. <laughs> Amen or not? Okay? Good career, you can lose it also. You never lose God. When you have this know-how, you never lose it again. This is the way to be truly successful. You, see. you must yearn for this. The problem is, you must yearn for this more than temporary success. Yearn for this. Lord, I want to know you, hear you face to face, see you face to face. Second, the evidence now is you will win over all your enemies. Hmm. What is your enemy? Enemy is your problem. Satan come in the form of problems. Let me ask you, do you want to have no problem in your life or you want to win over all your problems? Mirel, why you? No problem? Win over, right? You want to have no problem, you go up to heaven, you live in Atapchu. Okay, I say that again. Huh? You go up, no reward. No battles in your life. Everything smooth sailing. Everything good. You've been envious of everyone, but you made everyone inferior, jealous of you. You see, you receive nothing in heaven. But I want to be someone who win over enemies. When you win over that enemy, that problem, that problem will not come back to you again. You see, this is a spiritual law. Because Satan is afraid of you already. From the, you see, you must make Satan afraid of you, you see. Satan is afraid of people who are not afraid to die, who are not afraid to lose. If you're scared to lose, Lord, I, what if I don't have good grades? What if I don't have this money? I don't have the finances. What if, what if, what if? You see, you're scared. Satan knows. You're not scared already. Everything is in your hand. I'm not scared. Anyone who loses his life for me, you'll get his life. You want your life, you want your desire so much. Then you realize you're always failing. You're always affected. You want to win over your enemies. Okay? So you, if you can receive this evidence, at one point of time you realize, Little things cannot affect you at all. Little failures, you know, you can just get over quickly. When people say something about you, bad things, you don't feel inferior anymore. Now you know, you have grown in strength. This is, it. This is real growth, you see. This is real sanctification. Three, hmm. Hmm. People always think, uh, Pastor Vincent, wow, Pastor Vincent has a loving relationship with the wife, you know. We want to be like him, we want a marriage like him, you know. Wow, the prince and the Cinderella, so, they love each other so much, you know. You think, you think we don't quarrel? <laughs> you think we don't quarrel? We experience what every normal couple experience. My wife get uptight, panic, when things not done at home, she get frustrated. This kind of thing happen at home, all the time. But until I win over, not her, the enemies. <laughs> so, she's not the enemy. But, I wrestle you, I know, I shouldn't be affected by this. In fact, I should overwhelm her, right? I should compliment her and, and see beyond the problem, you see? So, so sometimes when she reacted like that to me, you know, so I just take it, mm, nothing, feel nothing, you see? When I feel something, you know, I will react back and that's where the problem grows. See, when I feel nothing, okay, you're not happy, okay? I just keep quiet, no? Oh, sometimes she bursts along, you know? <laughs> so I just keep quiet, also, okay? Then after she's feeling okay, then I come back, oh, what's the problem, you know? So, <laughs> but I tell you, I'm not the kind of person who can take things easy. I'm not born like that. 
when this kind of thing happens at home, actually I'm praying within. You know, I'm fighting in my spirit. I'm fighting against the voice uh, that keep telling me, look at your wife. You should give her a good scolding. <laughs> the condemning voice. Look at her. She's so unspiritual. You see? She wake her up. This is the voice. So I'm fighting with this voice. Because I have my own temperaments as well. So when I fought with that, and I start to see, actually the Lord loves her. But this is beyond her control, you see? This situation is beyond her control. So I try to see her as the victim. Then I over, overcome that. Then I realize she gets angry lesser and lesser. You see, this is the thing. You must win over your enemies. And this is not just theory, you know. If I, if I don't give you this example, you never learn, I tell you. You, you think, wow, Pastor Vincent always has a perfect situation. I make my situation like that, you see, through the gospel. You must know. You have strongholds. Everyone has strongholds because everyone has weakness. When two persons live together, one person already has spiritual problem. Two persons come together, the spiritual problem multiply because you got to live together. Definitely. So, overcome this. You overcome this, you'll be truly blissful in your marriage life. Amen? Mm. Those have a married one, hallelujah, amen. <laughs> First of all, you still can choose. <laughs> Second, you are allowed to practice um, in a simulation. <laughs> Once you're married, this is a battlefield, real thing. Cannot, cannot separate really, am I right? Oh, you cannot separate it. But it's now still simulation. You know, when you go for better, you know, simulation, uh, this is not the real thing yet. <laughs> so, so practice all the time. So yeah, two love birds behind practice, huh? <laughs> practice all the time. I and three, and then uh, number three. Then, then you realize then this is the inner tranquil, inner peace, joy, love, and this is the inner fruits that will come. Inner evidence, liberty. Before the physical evidence come, this will come first. You see. This is all about Christianity. When we say love, joy, peace, the fruits of the Holy Spirit overwhelm. This is the part. When you can live like that, joyful, sing music to the Lord, make music to the Lord all the time, you see, you can overwhelm everything. You know, people who are stubborn, especially say your family members stubborn, you, know, you cannot teach them and correct them. You cannot. You have to melt them. I, keep, I kept saying that. Some, some people, you have to melt them. In fact, all people are like that. Once you melt them, that's it. That's why the wives, how to overwhelm, how to overwhelm your husband? You have to submit. The submissive spirit. Even she, he's a good for nothing or stubborn head. But when you submit, uh, the stubborn spirit leave. They submit for the Lord. Okay? For the Lord. Lord, I know. He's also wounded. So I submit to him, then the stubbornness will leave. You see, this is the way. So you must be spiritually discerned until this point where you can overcome your flesh and see beyond the problem, physical problem. Okay? Four. Hmm. I always say, uh, our problem is, what is it? Our problem is, it's not about poverty. It's a feeling of lack. The lack kills you. It's not that you are busy but you worry about tomorrow, right? When you worry about tomorrow, you see no grace today. This is the thing, okay? You take things one at a time, you see the Lord is with you. See, you're bitter within first. When you're bitter within, you're bitter about everything, okay? So once you restore this promise of God, this evidence, you see, you enjoy physical, number four, physical evidence. God gives us physical evidences, okay? What physical evidence first? You yourself, we receive the you yourself will have a balanced life you yourself will have an orderly life you see uh, your interpersonal relationship interpersonal your finances you see you restore you see uh, you start talking to people you know your interpersonal you start talking to people whom you are enemy to you know this kind of thing will happen and then your finances you see finances oh. mm. we're no longer lacking or oh, all these things will come you see Everything. Oh, that's why I say, uh, you look beautiful, also, sister. Uh, brothers, you look confident. You know, sister, I say, how to be 
attractive, you know. I always told my girls that be attractive with a, a sister don't have to put on too much makeup actually. <laughs> Just a bit would do. But the thing that makes you attractive is when you are joyful and confident. See, I never see an upset lady who is beautiful. Never. When you are joyful, cheerful, see, you always attract guys, but you attract the right guys. <laughs> see, joyful and confident. Brothers, when you are godly and confident, godly and confident, full of passion for people, like King David. See, King David is full of passion. Your brothers, you are like that. You will draw all people to you. I didn't say girls, huh? Draw all people. <laughs> most important is this because brothers you are created right, to impact to impact to give answers to lead you see you want to draw people to you with your godliness and confidence okay and full of passion when you see someone having a problem you know you have compassion you have compassion straight away you see you have, you have the empathy people can feel it in you if a brother could have that that thing in him uh, he is very powerful dynamic you know, he is living out the word truly, full of grace and truth. All right, and then five, then the blessings of meeting. You see, this is where you enjoy the blessings of meetings. People will come to you. You see, this is where. Actually, blessings of meeting is where. Let me ask you, blessings of meetings are right with you, your family members and all, friends around you, but you are always too busy. Dwelling in your problems, you don't notice them. Blessings of meeting. And Norman, I ask you to pray. Uh, pray for your mom. I think your mom is close to the, to the gospel. So I told him, I, I met the mom a few days ago. Pray for your mom. Okay? Mom, uh, yeah, Helen and Norman, pray for, pray for her. Probably we got to see her right here. Start praying for her and then invite her, you know, come to Sunday service, you see. Because we've been praying for her for some time. And the other day I was there, you know, we were talking about church stuff and then she was interested. And she didn't shun away. That means, you know, her spirit is quite pure already. It's receptive. Okay? So pray for her. These are the, these are the doors, you know. When you restore all these things, you don't have to be perfect. But when you start restoring, doors will open up. And you notice these doors, these blessings of meeting are right beside you. And I know, every time Pastor Vincent come, Pastor Vincent will say, every time I talk about blessing of meeting, I want to bless you. This is a young church, you know, and these young people here. Of course, I hope you get your life partner through this way. You see, you get to meet your Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, wherever, Miss Right, through this way, blessings of meeting. I'll give you a testimony one, okay. This is a real testimony uh, of our Deacon Chi Ming. You know who is Deacon Chi Ming? Uh? My Deacon who came the other time. Uh, <laughs> you know how he date, managed to date and marry his wife? You know Adrian, the wife? Uh? Um, Deacon Chi Ming, let me tell you, he is born with a very petty and individual character. That kind of personality very petty. Uh, in the past, you know, he always thinks for himself only. Nobody does he think for himself. When people don't think for him, he gets upset. He was like that. I know him about 12 years ago, 10, 12, 10, 11, 12 years ago. So I saw the transformation in him. So previously he was like that, you know, easily upset, uh, petty. And I don't know why, when he'd have that kind of spirit, uh, just Things will keep on happening to him that make him more petty. There was a time, you know, there was, I remember, you know, there was, there was a time we went out together and then we were about to go, you know, we have our dinner and we were about to go. He said, oh, hey, wait for me, I'm going to the toilet. Oh, no. But he, I don't know whether he said or not, he went to the toilet and everyone just left without him because we didn't know he was in the toilet. <laughs> we didn't notice him. Wow, so he came out, you know, very upset. Very upset. And uh, you always say, you know, I get wounded in church, you know, no one cares for me. But actually people notice him, you know, but he feels like that and that kind of thing one or two times happened to him, you know. So it became strongholds in him, make him more bitter, more upset, you see. This kind of thing. Huh? So he, in a church, he has went after a few sisters, but no one has eyes for him. <laughs> you get what I mean? He was like that. 
you know, he was like that. Can you imagine? So, um, so eventually, you know, he has a lot of shortfalls, but eventually he come to a point where he had enough. So he resolute. He said, Lord, I have a lot of shortfalls. He shared, I have a lot of shortfalls. I, I know. I cannot change straight away overnight. But I'm willing to go step by step. You see? So when he resoluted, he, rest, he wrestled with God, he just gave his heart to the Lord. And the only thing he could restore, he realized, is to follow the Emmanuel message. So he hold on to the meetings weeks by weeks. He attended the meeting. Sometimes uh, he get drowsy. He just copy, you know, copy. You know, he shared that, right? To keep himself awake, you know. And then he tried his very best to be where the blessed people are, the blessed message are. He, he does that. And then, strangely, you know, strangely, so he drew himself in an un then unknowingly through the process, he became strong within. When he became strong within, strangely, you no, know, people start to notice him. But of course, he's still in a process. I wouldn't say he take just half a year to change. It's a long process. I can't remember how many years, but it just happened like that. But unknowingly, when he became stronger, uh, he doesn't groan and complain so much, you know, he doesn't feel lousy easily anymore. So, and then slowly God prosper him. God give him a ship, a ship in a church, someone to take care of. So he really take care of the ship faithfully, you know, the ship give him nonsense, sometimes the ship give him shit, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. So, he take in all the nonsense. So, and, but God, I don't know, God just give him the perseverance, you see. God just giving a person and he went on and on, you see. He doesn't look at results, you know. He just do what God wants him to do. And then he starts to drive. I don't know what? The, the, the brother brought a car, so he starts to drive. The brother don't use it during the weekend, so he uses it the weekend. So he starts to drive people to church. In the past, so individual, you know. He only sent himself home. <laughs> so now he sends people home in the church. He sends the brothers home. Then he starts to send who? Adrian home. Because Adrian happened to live nearby. But the story is that he has ever went after a dream before and was rejected quite a few times. You got what I mean? Uh? So this one already, we thought, oh, gone case already. Lah. We thought maybe you should go for someone else, you know. But he sent her not because of hidden agenda, but because they live nearby. So just send her out of convenience, you know, just do this every week, you know, without asking for anything. You, you get what I mean? So he's quiet, so sometimes he sends the sister, the people, he doesn't talk, you know, that kind of thing. So that come a time I felt this brother is growing maturely. So, so I told my wife, hey, wife, I think maybe it's about time, you know, we can try to uh, find some girls, maybe in the church don't have love like, for him, you know. Maybe outside church, do you know any girls, any Christian girls, you know, God-fearing, uh, someone, okay eligible for him so happened it happened that my wife knew uh, a customer a female customer uh, my wife was in the engineering line you know. so this female customer is hey, not bad this uh, a Christian for about 10 years and then serving in the church everything is good while wow, eligible wow perfect for Deacon Chiming so we deliberately you know there was a church outing I remember about five years ago, there was a church outing. So I told her, hey, let's bring the girl. Let them meet. Lah. So we tried to match make, no? <laughs> well, pastor do those things. Nah. <laughs> secretly, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> secretly, no one knows. Only me and my wife know. So we brought the, the sister. Oh, the sister, very cute, man. <laughs> I also find her cute. <laughs> so, so, uh, so we tried to match make, let them meet each other. Before that, we, we've given them the email so they have a, converse with one another lah, huh? so now they see each other in real then that day during the church outing eh? I realized something our sister Adrian wasn't that happy that day <laughs> <laughs> eh? she was always a cheerful girl right Adrian was smiling you know so it was very obvious why she's not happy ah so I start to have question mark already. <laughs> so after that outing, I said, Brad Chiming, come, come, come. I think we need to re-strategize now. <laughs> Let's forget about the other girl. Let's go back to the original one. <laughs> so I told him that. And then everyone, so we re-strategize. I say, maybe uh, you go back to the original one, there will be a chance, you know, so it went on seamlessly. So after 
about less than a year. So they start to date and you know the story went on, they got married in 2008. So they are expecting their first child now. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> so this is the way. Hey, don't just listen to love story. Huh? <laughs> you people, I know, I say this kind of thing, you're very interested. No, only the love story overwhelm you. What is the most important thing? What is the most important? It's the process, not the product. It's the change of heart by Brother Chiming. When he was nothing, Lembe, I see, they see, that kind of point, he wrestled you, you know, let himself be at the right place at the right time, you see? And let the message, let the brethren, you know, lift him bit by bit. And then he slowly changes. You see, when the heart changes, everything changes. It always happened like that. So people in church never see miracles evident. Why? Because they keep hearing the same message, but that message doesn't change their heart. Jesus values them, take them as the main character, but they never believe it. When you don't believe it, your heart is always the same. You're always feeling down, low self-esteem. So you're always comparing yourself with others, always thinking you don't have something where other people have. You see, this is the thing that kills you, you see. But I want you to know, when you root yourself here, your blessings of meeting come. You go at the right step, you go to the right place, the right time, and you look back to your life. Look back. What happened is, God has blessed you in every way. Just like Abraham. Genesis 24 verse 1. You see, Genesis 24 verse 1. What is, what is it? The Bible says, God bless him in everything he does, in every way. Now, Abraham had fumbled or not? He fumbled a lot of times, right? He told a lie, you know, and, and then he went back to Egypt and he got himself into trouble. He married her guy, you know, and gave birth to Ishmael. He fumbled a lot of times, right? Sometimes he don't believe God. He was down. He, he was down because he don't have a child. He fumbled a lot. But he keep on following the Lord. Sacrifice the altar, the altar, you know, sacrifice to the Lord and call upon the name of the Lord. Be where the Lord wants him to be. And as time went by, he looked back, actually, God bless him in every way. It's just like Brother Chimmy, when you look back now, you see all these things, uh, his pettiness, his individualism, it became his testimony now. So, so you can laugh about it, <laughs> you get what I mean? So all his failures change to blessings, you see? You gotta, you gotta get this right. I, I want you to get this right before you can really impact your seven fields. Now, I give you a story. I end with this, you know. Um, and the other day I shared this during my Sunday message. I was reading a book, a children's story book. Okay, this is a very meaningful book. I get to know the story like that. You know, have you heard of this book called The Horribus Boy in the Whole Wide World? The Horribus. Horribus Boy in the Whole Wide World. Have you heard before? Sorry? You don't know. It's about a story about a boy. His name is Edwardo. Edwardo. <laughs> so, he's, a, he's an ordinary boy. He loves to play. He loves to be in mischief, you know, sometimes he quarrel with friends, sometimes he don't brush his teeth, you know. Look, every boy does that, right? Everyone does that. So, in fact, just ordinarily, mischief, not horrible. But the thing is, the thing is, things happen to him that make him worse. So there was once, he pushed his friends. Ah, the teacher caught him in the act and said, you are the most notorious boy I've ever seen. <sighs> so he became more notorious. And there was once, you know, he kicked a cat, you know, just to have fun, you know, just want to touch him. And, you know. A man saw it. Hey, you are the most cruel boy I've ever seen. <laughs> so this thing get into his spirit, you see? So he became more cruel. Uh, so sometimes, you know, he's like every other boy, his room is untidy and all. So the mother came into the room and said, hey, Look at your room. You're the most untidy boy I've ever seen. <laughs> so, on and on. Slowly, he became the most horrible boy <laughs> in his eyes and in everyone's eyes. You, you, you get the idea? There was a day. He was so frustrated. He kicked a pot of flowers and the flowers land on the soil. And then a man came and said, Wow, man. You can plant a garden. Wonderful, man. <laughs> you can plant the most beautiful garden. 
he was so amazed and his spirit changed when his spirit changed uh, it's like his destiny changed when his destiny changed uh, there come a day he pushed his, his friends again and then don't know why the lamp uh, the bulb on the, on the ceiling fell Prang! oh it's a mr friend wow the teacher said well you're the boy with the quickest reaction i've ever seen oh, no. <laughs> so, then you know there was once you know the mother was coming to his room and Edward, oh, do you clean your room? No, no. Oh, he was so panicky because the room was so untidy. So he threw out all his things, you know, from the window. <laughs> and then a lorry came, you know, the, the Karanguni uh, came. And then just parked in front of the house. So he got all his old stuff thrown in. And the, the man said, you are the kindest boy I've ever seen. Oh, thank you so much. And the mothers came in the room. Wow, this is so tidy. You are the tidiest boy I've ever seen. <laughs> See, you get know I me? Mean? In the past, he never brushed his teeth. You know, he goes to school, the, the teacher said, you are the dirtiest boy I've ever seen. But there was one, he got so dirty, never changed his uniform, wherever. And flies came after him you know, and fell in the mud. And then a lady saw poor boy and brought him out and cleaned him up. And then he, he goes to school with new sets of clothes. The teacher said, wow, Edward Doe, you are the cleanest boy I've ever seen. Everyone learn from him. <laughs> you know I mean? It's still the same him didn't change much but his spirit changed you know when I read this book okay when I read this book it's just like a person who really met the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus said you are my son you are the main character of this era you are valuable for the kingdom when Jesus say that you truly believe it and then you experience a transformation of your heart you realize that will be the time your destiny change you start to meet the right things the right, be at the right place and re meet the right person you see, you, you get what I mean? Uh? This is called the spiritual realm control the physical realm. So I want you to know, the seven fields, this is a, a very difficult place, difficult field to conquer. Yes, it is so difficult that it's impossible to conquer with your own wits or cleverness, ability, no way, unless your spirit change. How do your spirit change? When you restore this. When you restore this, this will happen. You will start seeing evidences. My brother Chi Ming, you see? We were at one point of time thinking, you know, this brother can never change. He will be like that his whole life, you see? But there's only one thing we are amazed that he can be at the right place at the right time. He knows the whole out the tower. You got what I mean? Uh? This is the whole out. The church, the message, this is the place. If I don't root myself in that, I'll never change, you see? I can change for a while, but the root doesn't change. So he put himself in the right place with the right message. And then at times went by, he got the right living. And then the evidence come. Amen or not? Amen or So church, learn this mystery. Okay, I'm going to leave you with this. Okay, give me the evidence. Give me the evidence of your spirit for the next two months. All right? Okay, learn from the Lord. Don't learn from me. Learn from the Lord. Whatever I teach you, it has to internalize into your spirit and you have to confirm it. Amen? Amen. Come, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much. Uh, we give thanks to you for the word that you have given us. Lord, we want to give you all the glory for the words that you have taught us. Lord, they are so accurate. It's truth. It is truth that will set us free. It is spirit, spirit that will liberate us, that will change us, so that, Lord, we will never be the same before. Although our condition all remain the same, but because our spirit changed, everything changed. Lord, this is the way you have determined for us to impact our seven fields. And we believe, Lord, right here, people will find conviction with the message today. They are the main character of their seven fields. These people who here heard your word, convicted, Lord, they are convicted by you, Lord. So you are their Lord. You will be over them. You reign through them. So thank you so much, Lord. Today, Lord, release your blessings upon CLCP. Amen. Let all the people here see that you are Lord. Amen. You are the one. You are the only answer. No other answer. For there is no name given under heaven that we can be saved except you, Lord. You are the only way, only truth, only life to the Father. No one goes to the Father unless through you. So we give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.